News Now is brought to you by the Bank of Guam, the People's Bank. From the Pacific News Center in Hagatnya, Guam, here's Clint Rigel and Janella Carrera with Betsy Brown and Roselle Romanes. PNC Sports with Blake Watson and weather with Joanna O. With your news now. Off today, good evening and thanks for tuning in to the Pacific News Center. We are broadcasting live in Saipan and in Guam. I'm Clint Rogel. And I'm Janella Carrera. Thanks for tuning in. Topping your news tonight, a 32-year-old man is dead after he was reportedly stabbed early this morning by a suspect who was reportedly causing trouble in a Dedido neighborhood. PNC spoke with Ike Chargaloff, the father of Felipe Regis, the stabbing victim who died this morning. At 8 o'clock this morning, Ike Chargaloff and his wife were at home ready to start the day when they got an unexpected visit from their son's boss. My uh, son's uh, boss came over to let us know about it. Chargaloff explains that his son's boss came over to break the news that his son was stabbed the night before and was taken to the Guam Memorial Hospital. Stunned and shocked, Chargaloff says the boss explained that the suspect was causing trouble at his residence in Machinao Dedido. Well, they told me that um, this guy was drinking and that he came and uh, just um, uh, out of the blue he stabbed. Oh my God! my son, because it's been uh, it's been after uh, it's been saying that he's, he's going to stab the mother, he's going to stab the the boss, the owner of the uh, the company where my son is staying. Chargaloff and his wife went over to GMH to look for their son, Felipe Regis, but at the time, GMH did not have a name for the victim. Well, when we came over there, uh, the security there uh, kind of help us out, but. He cannot, uh, he cannot find any listing. It's a guy that was brought in here, and uh, that's my son, which uh, he was tapped on the back. Oh, he was tapped on the back? Yeah, okay, follow me. So that's when we followed. They were taken to the recovery room, but were told by doctors that their son was brain dead, and there was nothing more they could do for him. Chargaloff and his wife had to make the difficult decision right there to take Regis off of life support. He died between 10 and 11 this morning. Chargaloff describes what his son was like. You will get out of his way to try to help people. That's him. If you don't have it, I need God, you give it to him. Wow. That's what he is. If you, if you, need, to, you need help, you stop by and help him. Told that the suspect was Chukis, the grieving father says he hopes that more can be done to tighten immigration laws for criminals who are not U.S. citizens. And they're not supposed to be here. I mean, they're not American citizens or what? Have them deported. Go back to their place. It's bad. It's very bad. It's no good. No good to put them here. After PNC inquired with GPD about the case, spokesman A.J. Balahaja said GPD is investigating an altercation that led to the stabbing of an unidentified man. He says a person of interest is being questioned. GPD Chief Fred Berdalio has launched an internal affairs investigation following the use of a taser on a man in Tumon early Sunday morning. As PNC's Betsy Brown reports, video of the incident has been circulated on social media. A video showing police tasing a man who appears to be a tourist in Tumon is causing quite a stir on social media. A witness told PNC the man was kicked out of the globe on Sunday night about 20 minutes before the tasing took place. And DJ CJ Gallo says the man was clearly intoxicated. He was in the globe. He wasn't... Uh... He was being warned many times by a lot of the security in the globe on, on certain things he should or shouldn't do. But what do tourists think of this show of force? We showed the video to tourists in Tumon today to get their reactions and their reviews were mixed. What, what did you think of seeing that video? Uh, exciting. <laughs> and and uh, 
quite dead. Quite. Uh, Cry. One tourist we met said that while the man being tased may have been in the wrong, it's likely that language barriers and cultural misunderstandings escalated the incident. They attacked him. Mm -hmm. uh, Japanese uh, at first uh, the talk uh, because uh, Japanese uh, the almost Japanese uh, have no guns. Mm -hmm. Japanese uh, at first. Uh, uh, no talk, no attack. The tasing took place in this area, and in the video, you see the man's arms raised, and then you see him take a step back slightly before the taser gun goes off. However, you also might notice there's something dangling from his wrist. He was already wearing handcuffs. If you saw the video, you look at his right wrist, he was wearing a pair of, ha uh, of, of, of handcuffs. Once he struggled, that's when they all parted, not because they just wanted to tase him, but it, obviously they were, they were looking to protect each other. As for the tourists we spoke with today, they say the video does not change their feelings about Guam. Does it make you feel safe to be on Guam? Uh, very happy. Betsy Brown, PNC News. Guam Police PAO AJ Balhaja did send out a statement late this afternoon saying that an internal affairs investigation had been launched and that the officer who fired the taser has been placed on administrative leave. A man wanted in connection to the stabbing of a woman early yesterday morning was finally arrested last night. 28-year-old Rambo Ezra was charged with family violence, aggravated assault, terrorizing, and use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony. Guam Police Spokesman Officer AJ Balahaja tells PNC that Ezra was apprehended late yesterday afternoon and formally charged just a few hours later. He tells us that officers responded to Jonestown to Munning of a report of a female who had been stabbed multiple times. We received information from her that uh, she was up at Dededo at her residence when a male known to her uh, had uh, stabbed her uh, in the upper right arm, the mid portion of her back and multiple times to the left arm. Um, from what I understand, she is conscious, she is alert and, and responsive, and she was transported to GMH. Balahaja says the stabbing occurred around 3 o'clock Monday morning. It wasn't until sometime after 11 in the morning that the victim was able to get some help. And she was not uh, allowed to leave, and so um, she waited for him to fall asleep, the suspect. And then she... Uh, managed to, to get to Tumani where she asked for help. Ezra is expected to appear in court sometime tomorrow afternoon. Lawmakers discussed Bill 4, which would have repealed the raises given to the governor, lieutenant governor, cabinet members, and lawmakers if the bill wasn't amended on the session floor. Here's more. We have plans to pay out the remaining pay due to our law enforcement officers. We have plans to fix the prison problems and to keep us out of receivership. We have all these other plans that we need to follow through with. So why are we going to be prioritizing following through on the plan to, the plan to pay ourselves more when we have all of these other plans that we need to follow through with for our people? But Senator Tommy Morrison had plans of his own. The Republican lawmaker proffered an amendment to strike Section 1 of Bill 4. What's in Section 1? Well, Section 1 contains the part that actually repeals the raises for the governor, lieutenant governor, cabinet members, and lawmakers. So without Section 1, the main intent of the bill is lost. We endorse the competitive wage and we endorse this process of updating modernization of the uh, unified pay scale. That was in 2013. I, I believe many of those uh, that were here uh, during that term uh, knew what we were getting into. We are now 20 plus million into this plan, or let's say 95 plus percent into this plan. What this section here, Madam Speaker, is doing is addressing 3% or 5% of this issue. Morrison's amendment to strike section one prevailed with a vote of nine to five. I enjoy listening to all the debate, to all the good points that are being made, but at the end of the day, and at the end of all the eloquent debate, it's going to be nine to five. And those nine who see it a certain way is going to prevail. 
And at the end of the day, the bill was sent to the third reading file without the section in it that actually repeals the raises for the governor, lieutenant governor, cabinet members, and lawmakers. We'll now go to Blake Watson to see what's going on with sports. I think he has a special message for us. Or maybe oh, for I you. heard, yes. Oh. Yes, I heard. What's Let's up, see. Blake? What's up? Thanks a lot, Vlint and Janiel. Sports is coming up. We have softball's hottest team in the league, plus a Guam sports first ever. Sports, it's coming up.